Mrs. Reynoso. I am the librarian at Loma Vista Middle School. Uh, before I became a librarian, I taught high school English and I also taught intervention at another middle school. Um, I am not the only staff member in this library. I also have my assistant, uh, Ms. Fierro. Hello, my name is Ms. Fierro. I work in the library here with Ms. Reynoso, which is my librarian. So I assist her in any needs. Welcome to our library. This is a tour of our library to help you navigate through our different sections so that you can make the most of your time when you visit. You will check in at the main desk during our open hours with your ID number and reason for visiting. The only time you do not check in is if you are visiting with your whole class for library lessons. This helps us assist you faster. Our fiction section is quite large. Here you will find diverse array of genres, mysteries, thrillers, romances, comedy, historical fiction, suspense. We have a lot of different books for you to choose from. The books are all organized by call number in alphabetical order. You will find the author's first three initials of their last name on the spine of the book. Call numbers are easy to locate with a quick search in Destiny Discover. Our easy read section is perfect for you if you're just learning English or have a younger sibling or cousin that you'd like to read to. You will find some very beautifully illustrated picture books. Our nonfiction section covers a wide range of topics from science and history to biographies and animals. Our most popular nonfiction section tends to be the sports and video games, which you will find in the 700s. Our nonfiction books are really easy to locate with a search in Destiny Discover. Call numbers refer to the Dewey Decimal System, and you will find the call number on the spine of the book. We also have some special sections in the library. Since Loma Vista is a DLI, dual language immersion school, we have a lot of books in Spanish. We have nonfiction, fiction, graphic novels, and easy reads. These are easy to find by the bright green label on the spine. Behind the beanbag chairs in the picture, we have our graphic novel section. We have both fiction and nonfiction graphic novels. Graphic novels are characterized by the bright yellow label on the spine. Next to that section is the manga section. It also has a bright yellow label on the spine. When you are ready to check out, our circulation desk is right at the front of the library. Please come see us with your identification card which acts as your library card to check out your items. We have a lot of fun things to do in the library other than just check out books. There are board games, Legos, coloring pages, crafts, and other things to create during lunchtime or before school. We also have a fun magnetic poetry board. Currently at Loma Vista, we do not have any reference materials in print. Those have been removed from the previous teacher librarian. Please keep watching this orientation for extensive online reference materials and keep posted for new reference materials in print. Hi, this is Mrs. Reynoso from the Loma Vista Middle School Library. I am the teacher librarian here. Uh, we're going to go over some of our print and digital resources that we have available in the library. So if we go ahead and I'm going to open this tab here. This is a report of our entire middle school library collection. Um, we currently have 13,603 items in our collection. The average age is 2008. We have 12.7 items per student, which I find that 
pretty good. As far as fiction and nonfiction, we have 50% fiction, 50% nonfiction. If you remember correctly, fiction is learning through or imagination and nonfiction and would be learning through information. And I reference that a lot when you guys come into the library. Um, as far as the different items we have, you can see here we have a lot of um, science technology items. We have a lot of arts and recreation items. I, when I say item, I mean materials and books. Um, as far as literature, uh, we have a lot of literature. However, this classification is a little different, but in the fiction category, we have a, a ton of literature there. As far as history and geography, we have a lot of information and biographies. If you are doing any uh, reports for social studies and history, we have a lot of information for you to reference. Uh, reference materials are very slim. We will be working on those in the next upcoming school year. So look for more reference materials at that time. All right, and then moving along, we have lots of different fiction books. We have some easy fiction, a little bit, um, and then lots of regular general fiction. And we have lots of graphic novels. We have a ton of Spanish items because we are a um, dual language immersion school. So we have a lot of DLI related books. So a lot of Spanish books, because that's the other language that we have here um, that some of you are in classes for, and you know that you can come and get a book in Spanish. We have a lot of diverse titles in our collection, which supports an environment that values and supports diversity, equity, in, in, and inclusion, which is very important for our school. Um, a lot of books on social and emotional learning that help to support the emotionally intelligence and establish relationships and make responsible decisions. A wide range of books in different reading levels. So depending on if you pick a book and it's difficult for you, you might need an easier book, you might need a harder book. Um, you are always welcome to ask me at any time. So I'm going to scroll back on up here and we're going to go ahead and look at our ebooks. So our ebooks and digital books, uh, we do not have a lot of ebooks and digital books in our collection, mostly because our population of students, you guys out there, um, don't really check out a lot of ebooks. So we don't really spend money and have licenses for ebooks because a lot of my students prefer books in print. However, if that changes in the upcoming year or so, we may have some more items. Um, in digital format, so audiobooks and ebooks. I myself really love audiobooks and ebooks, so I think that would be a great addition to our collection, but maybe not just yet. I want to see how many students really um, want to begin using those resources. Okay, as far as digital resources, for students, we have a lot of digital resources. So this is just an example of our class link. Um, I know a lot of the students are very up to date on how to use class link. So you will see here, we've got some uh, Adobe Express for education, Brain Pop. Um, some of these are also for me because I am a teacher. So some of them may not apply to you. Um, our Destiny catalog is here and we'll go over that another time. Formative. Uh, you might use that in class. I know you use that in math class. Um, Nearpod, tutor.com, which is a great, great resource uh, for students to use. So actually, we're going to go ahead and look at tutor.com because I know a lot of my students have not been really using it. Let's see if I can get it to launch. All right, and tutor.com is really, really neat. Uh, basically, you can go on here at any time and you can um, ask a tutor for help. And it's really neat because you'll get a live tutor in the chat. Um, it's really helpful if you're at home and you need some extra assistance. Apparently, it's not gonna let me look at it in a student view, but that's okay. I just wanted you guys to see, you just click on the tab and it will open for you. All right, if you have any issues with your class link, please come see me in the library as well. Um, but these are some things we have for you guys to use. Um, we also have Gale in Context, 
Gale in context for middle school. This is for environmental studies, uh, for science. And I will go through that with you at another time further along in this orientation. And we'll look more into our research databases that we have for students. All right, I hope you, you guys have an amazing day and take care. Hello students, this is Mrs. Reynoso from the Loma Vista Library. I am your teacher librarian. Uh, today we're going to go over a little bit of how to use our website so that you can more effectively navigate um, our services and what we offer here. So our website is right here. So this is basically the Loma Vista Middle School website. So I'm going to show you how to get to our website. For the library, you're going to go to academics. You're going to just hover over that and then you're going to go down and click on LV Library. And that tab will pop up here. Okay, and here we have our Loma Vista Library website. Most of you know if you come in for regular library visits that we use this uh, library website a lot. So I will often post lessons on here. I often will have information on here that we'll go through if we're looking at our research databases um, or if you need help with MLA format or anything like that. So a lot of stuff is here. Uh, what's really important is on this homepage, you have uh, Destiny Discover here button for that. And then you also have a Need a Lunch Pass button. Uh, those are the two things I get asked the most is how can I find a book and when can I get a lunch pass? So those are two things there. Um, you'll see further down, we've got library hours, our information sheet, which you guys should be well aware of how to use, um, a calendar. So there's our calendar for the month of October, but that calendar gets updated all the time. We are a very busy library. Um, at the bottom, you'll see myself, uh, teacher librarian, Mrs. Reynoso, and then um, our librarian assistant, Ms. Fierro. Uh, we also have a student-only password protected page that's for your lessons. So that's down there in case we are working on something in the library on the day you come to visit us. And we'll scroll back to the top. Up at the top, you have a books tab. If you go to the books tab, you'll see when you can check out books, which is basically all day long. If we are open, you can get a book unless there's something else happening in the library. But it's very rare that we will close um, unless we have to. So we are always open. Uh, during our hours. And then here again is that Destiny Discover button. And we're going to look at that library catalog in a little bit. Um, here's some book etiquette, some rules about our space, which we've gone over before. This is really neat. This is a user guide of how to put a book on hold through Destiny Discover. Um, I have a lot of students that want to check out popular books. And a lot of those popular books are out all the time. So if they're out, this is an easy way to uh, put a book on hold. And I'll go over that when we get to our catalog um, instruction. And then down here, I also have a book recommendation form. If there is a book that you really, really, really like and you do not see it in our catalog, in our library on Destiny Discover, you can recommend that book. I just got a recommendation for some K-drama uh, books today. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my list because I am about to place a book order very soon. So you just fill this out. You need to be signed into your Alward Schools account and put the book recommendation in the title and a link is very helpful. I have not read every single book in the world. So it's really helpful if you place a link so that I can review the book and see if it's appropriate for our library. Okay, now at the top again, we have uh, lunch in the library. So lunch in the library, um, this is our space. It's updated a little bit more now. We have some beanbag chairs and things that I need to update this picture, but uh, basically looks the same. We have some Legos. We've got some colored pencils and stuff down in that area. There's a puzzle table in this area now. Um, up here in the file folders, I have coloring pages for you and different other things to, to play with while you guys are in the library at lunchtime or before school. So here you're free to color, draw, study, do any activities that we have for you. Um, seating at lunch is first come, first serve, pass basis. You must have a pass and you must have your ID card to come in for lunch. And if you come to lunch, you stay the entire time. You must sign up the morning of the school day you want to visit and make sure that you sign up for your lunch time. We are a very large school. We have 1,024 students here at Loma Vista Middle School. 
So we have three separate lunches, as you are aware. So make sure that you sign up for your either your sixth, seventh, or eighth grade lunch. Do not sign up for eighth grade lunch if you are a sixth grader. So make sure that you read that. So to sign up for lunch, we'll go to that tab here. You're going to click reserve your lunch spot. And you'll get this pass that comes up. And so right here, we have already closed for the morning because it is past 9.30. So at 9.30, all the lunch spots close. And it says here, if there are no open slots, we are closed. Please be sure to sign up for the lunch you wish to attend. If we go to October 5th, the next day, as you can see here, we will be open tomorrow for sixth grade lunch only because I have seventh graders and eighth graders visiting during other times. So we'll be opening for sixth grade lunch and then you'll just sign up, sign up here um, and put your ID number in and you've got a pass to come in for lunch. I really like that because then you don't have to be physically on campus or have to get to the library to get a pass, a paper pass before uh, lunchtime. You can sign up in your first period class when you open your Chromebook. So that's the reason why we do it that way. And it's very simple. And if you have questions, you can come to the library and I can help you sign up. It's very, very easy. All right. So some other stuff on our website, you have research. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and our research databases. It has a little bit of an explanation of what a research database is. Uh, these are some of the research databases that we have here at Loma Vista Middle School and in our district. And I will be going over what those databases are in the next video so that you can learn about how to use research databases effectively and search for information that you might need for your projects at school, papers, etc. Okay, so that's a very great helpful tab. Uh, there's also an MLA format page and you'll find an MLA format guide here on the right, like a, a user guide that talks about what MLA format is. It's modern language association format. I was a former English teacher, so I'm very well aware of how to use MLA. Um, what's really cool is Google Docs has an MLA format report already ready to go. Uh, and so if you need any help with that, I can definitely help you with that. APA format, we don't really use very often in the middle school, but MLA format, I know we use a lot. So uh, I can help you with that as well. But that's just a quick user guide if you need assistance. All right, so our help tab. Okay, if you need help, again, please come see me, Mrs. Reynoso or Ms. Fierro. You can always email me as well with your uh, .NET account, your Google dot, your AlbertSchools.net account. Uh, you can always just come into the library. You can, with a pass from your teacher, we're always welcome to have you come in before school, at lunchtime, whatever you need. Um, here's a Destiny Discover student guide that goes over how to use Destiny if you need more step-by-step -step information. For parents, I have a how to set up Aries Parent Portal and some Chromebook shortcuts for your parents when they get a little stuck. Uh, this here is our Loma Vista Library Technology Guide. So I'm going to go over that very briefly. I'll click that. All right, so this is a separate website that's connected to our Loma Vista Library website, but it has a little bit more tech help uh, that can assist you in anything else technology based. So here uh, I have an option if you're a student or staff. So this is also for staff, but the student page has a lot of information for you. And I've got some Chromebook information, Chromebook help because we often forget passwords and email addresses and ours are mostly standardized, meaning they're the same. Um, a user guide on how to use the Gale Research in Context, how to print here in the library, I'm going to go over this a little slowly. How to sign up for a lunch pass and do a quick search in Destiny Discover. I'm going to talk about that too in a little bit, uh, the Destiny Discover side. Here's some more information about Destiny Discover, um, a podcast about a book talk. That is a really great book and our acceptable use policy here. So there's a lot of great stuff here on the technology website um if you need any help and then on the very bottom on all of the websites that i manage the loma vista library website plus this technology guide you can always click back there and return back to home and if we go all the way down 
you can also click back here and return all the way back to our Loma Vista main website. Okay, so let's get over, go over Destiny Discover very briefly. Let's go back to our Loma Vista Library website. Okay, so Destiny Discover, I really like. I like the way it looks. It's really fun for kids, for you guys to find books. You basically just click that button and it opens up our Destiny Discover. Many of you have told me already this is very familiar because you use this in um, elementary school. So here you can see some of our recently added books, some new books that we just got. These are in Spanish. We got a big shipment of Spanish books. So my students that are in dual language immersion will have a lot of options. Okay. And so really simple if you need to search for something. I get a lot of requests right now. It's October for horror books. So I'm going to type in horror. And it's going to search our catalog, which is all of our books. And then you get all these information, all these books about horror. We have a series called Horror In, and it's, it's a series of scary states of mind. So different truish stories about um, scary events that have happened in different states. Um, we have Home Sweet Horror, some other fiction books, and um, Fear. This one's very popular by R.L. Stein, Chihuahua Wolf. So you've got some that are really scary and some that are maybe not so scary. It just depends on what you're looking for. And then also when you click on the button, it gives you a little overview. And I really like that. So Chihuahua Wolf, A Tale of Mystery and Horror, says here, Paco, a smart, fashionably dressed Chihuahua, the pampered pet of 10-year-old Olivia, comes up with a plan to transform himself into a big, fierce Chihuahua in order to get Natasha the Afghan he adores to take him seriously. So that sounds really cute and maybe not super scary. So maybe you might be interested in that. So I'm going to close that. So since this book is currently in our library, what you do is you'd either take a picture of this or write down the call number, and then you would go find that in our library. Right now it's organized by alphabetical order, author's last name, um, and then our Nonfiction is in Dewey Decimal System order with the number, so 133.1, and the author's last name, three first letters of the author's last name. Okay, so it's very simple. Um, we'll go over this more in your library lessons when you come in with your classes. If there's a book that you want and it's on, it's out. So let's see, this one's very popular, Fear 13 Stories of Suspense and Horror. So those three buttons are very significant and find out more information. So I'm gonna click on these buttons here. I'm gonna view the title, preview. Oh, it didn't wanna work for me. Okay, well, we'll just click the title. All right, and then up here, it gives us just like the other one, same information. You can also review books too. That is also something that we're able to do. Okay, so very, very fun, fun way, easy way to find books. You get to look at the cover. I know we tell you not to judge a book by its cover, but it's really a nice way to see if you might be interested in a book and it definitely helps you find it. You can also log in up here at the top. Um, you can sign in with your Google account, single sign on. Let me use my Alvord account, just like you would. And see if it goes, it's a little slow right now. Oh, you know what? It's not gonna work for me because I am a teacher. So, Let's try it one more time. So thank you very much at getting this little preview of how to use Dest Destiny Discover. 
and how to get a lunch pass and how to navigate our website and technology guide. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you real soon. Thank you. Hi, this is Mrs. Reynoso from the Loma Vista Library. And I'm here today to talk to you about online search strategies and research databases that we have available here at Loma Vista. So these are all some online things that you can do to help you do better with your projects. You can find more information. So today we're going to look at how to do Google searches more effectively, how to use Wikipedia more effectively, as well as how to use our research databases that we have with the Loma Vista Library. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna open a new tab and we're gonna to get to Google. So usually when you guys have a project that you have to do, we look to Google, right? We look to Google to find information. We look to Google so that we're able to um, easily find information. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna look up, we're gonna look up Apple. Say we have a project about apples. All right, so when we look up Apple, because we just said Apple, we didn't say what kind of Apple, um, and this project we're going to say is going to be about the fruit. So Apple comes up and it's apple.com, right? Everything about Apple. So Apple phones, uh, Macs, etc. So what we want to do is we want to look up the Apple fruit. So I'm going to type in Apple fruit. So even that basic knowledge of trying to find what works, um, meaning more being more specific that we're really searching about apple fruit and then this apple fruit comes up and we've got all these apples and information about apples so we're going to talk real quick about wikipedia so wikipedia is a great website i know a lot of your teachers say not to use it and that's true you don't want to use it as a source when you're citing information but there are things in Wikipedia that are not bad and it's good to know that it's out there if it can help give you some general information to help further your searches and further your research if necessary. So if we click on Wikipedia for the Apple, we're going to get some information. And here it is. So we've got this introduction about Apple. It even says right here, this article is about the fruit for the technology company. It gives you another link, see Apple Inc. for other uses, see Apple disambiguation. So there's lots of different information here about the Apple. So and then we go down, we have um, some pictures of apples. We have the scientific classification, the binomial name, some synonyms. We have a description. We have a diagram that enables the parts of the apple. Um, we have some other pictures of the apple, wild ancestors, aroma. You got lots and lots of information. And if you look on the side, you've got a great little table here um, that helps helps you go through the contents of this article. As you go all the way down, what's really neat about Wikipedia? I'm going to go through this quickly. There we go, all the way down. On the bottom, you will see our references. Look at all these references. So. Wikipedia is not a credible source on a whole. Anyone can come in and edit the article. So what is great about that is there are some good credible sources that are being referenced in Wikipedia. So if for some reason you know that you can look up here, this, this article, excuse me, I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to go ahead and click an article. I'm looking for a specific one. Hold on, guys. Apparently, I scrolled down a little too far. All right, so even this one here, we have Apple from the Natural History Museum, and you can see here where they're from, where the, the information came from. Apple production in 2021 from Pick List, Crops World, Region Production Qu Quantity, and this came from the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. So you can see that these sources aren't not credible, that they are credible, that you can trust some of these sources. So using Wikipedia as a source for more sources is, is great. And I think that we should all be doing that with your, with your projects. If that's, a, a, if that's an area that you want to explore for your sources. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open another tab. I'm going to type in... Google Scholar. So Google Scholar is a great search engine and it provides a simple way to broadly search for scholarly literature across a wide variety of disciplines. So look here, you can look at articles as well as case law, but we're going to stick with articles. So I'm going to say apple fruit. You can see we've been searching 
and apple fruit comes up and here is a bunch of references so like this one here you can find that you can see where it's from you can see the authors here the journal article it came from so these are some academic journals it cites you can see here on the left if you're looking for a certain date range but it goes all the way down and you can see all these other sources lots and lots and lots of different sources for you to choose from and it's really nice because you can see the websites here and you you know we've talked about different domains when we talked about website evaluation you've got .edu, .org those are the ones you want to stick with be very wary about .com let's go ahead and let's click this first one all right and so here we go from science direct so this one is a .com article but you also have an author but it says here, Scientia, Horticulture, volume 234, the 14th of April, what pages it was on from this academic journal. You have an abstract for the study. So you have some really good information here, some very highly academic information that you can find in Google Scholar. All right, so going back. We're going to go ahead and get to our library website. If you remember, you can either go through the Loma Vista Middle School website or you can click the Loma Vista Library link. Most of you have it bookmarked. And you're going to see up here at the very top, we have a research tab. We're going to go ahead and click the research tab here. All right, and now that you guys are in middle school, you may not be completely familiar with research databases. So research databases include magazine journals and newspaper articles, as well as media, such as audio recordings or photographs. These resources are verified sources of information and are created by experts, educators, and librarians. So research databases, it's where you're gonna find a wealth of information that's already been vetted, that's already been um, verified that it's credible sourcing. So you won't have to do that questioning of, oh, is this the right source? Like, is this going to be a credible resource? Can I trust this website? Can I trust this article? It's already trusted. So the greatest thing about using research databases is that we already know that, and that's really good. So if you come down here, I'm going to look for Gale in Context Middle School. We're going to look at that one first. You're going to go ahead and click that. And when you open it up, you're going to be set up with a little search bar and the search bar is going to be very basic you just go ahead and you open it up and you just type in we're going to go ahead and type in apple since we've been talking about apples and we get all these options that was really quick actually so we got references biographies images videos audio magazines news creative works so here under reference, you can see already, because we weren't specific with our search, we got Apple, Amazon, Starbucks, Chipotle. So we got all these different corpora corporations instead of the fruit, right? We were looking at Apple fruit. So if we go up to the top and we click advanced search. You can type in up here, you can type in Apple. Now we're going to type in fruit. So we're looking for apple and fruit in the article. If you wanted to add another one, you can. You might want to say in America, in South America, uh, maybe production and see what it says. You can also see down here, you've got different content types, different document types, publications, content levels. So you can see to what um, Lexile level, what reading level. So really good information here. So we're going to go ahead and hit search. And the same thing comes up where you can search by reference magazine, image, video, audio, and news. And then here we go. We've got Apple from the Columbia Electronic Encyclopedia, the brief article, 387 words. So it's nice because it gives you a little preview of what it looks like. This is Apple Maggot. This is Fruit and Mythology. This one's a little longer, 1,500 words about. You can see all these different types of things here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on... Um, let's see, we're going to just go ahead and click on the first one. Let's go ahead and click on Apple, the Columbia Electronic Encyclopedia. So this is from the Columbia Electronic Encyclopedia. This is what I really want to show you. So what's really cool about our research databases is that if you open your Google and it says send to Google Drive, you click the little triangle, it'll save the articles for you. So as you're doing your research for your project or papers, 
it'll combine all of your research into one folder. It's also really cool too, because it'll read it to you out loud. You can listen to the article. It'll translate it in a different language if necessary. You can click on other links that might be here that you may not know what those words are. Also here, you get a great source citation. So if you need to cite, which you will all have to cite for your projects and your papers, you can just copy and paste it. However, like we've talked about before, you want to make sure that those are correctly cited, that it's the correct format. All right, so that's the easy, easy way of how to find information on Gale and Context. So let's go back to the Loma Vista Library website. Okay, so here we go. All right, so now we're going to look at Gale Opposing Viewpoints. So these are great information about hot button topics, hot button meaning hot topics in society, issues of interest. So you might see, this is kind of fun if you're really interested in social, social news or almost anything, you can find a topic here and different opinions on it and what the other side might be. That's what it means by opposing. So when I used to teach high school English, I really liked this website. When I used to teach, um, argumentative essays, argumentative speeches, because then you have you have your argument and your counter argument. You can find support for that. So it's really, really nice that you can do that. You can browse more issues and you can see a bunch of different kinds of issues here. So look at that. How interesting. Lots and lots of different topics that you can check on. So let's go ahead and look at food safety since we're talking about apples. Well, kind of. So here's some food safety issues. You can read more. Okay. And just like the other one, because it's Gale, you can save it to your Google Drive. You can also find the citations here on the bottom, which is really good. And use the same citations. It's got some critical thinking questions. And it'll have other things. This is really nice. I like this, this area where it says more like this and you can find related articles, which is very, very cool. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our next Gale database, which is interactive science. So this one is really neat too. This one you can manipulate 3D interactive models and to visualize and understand concepts in bio biology, excuse me, chemistry, earth and space science. So in clicking this one, and if you access anything from the website, the library website, it just pops right up. You don't have to sign in unless you want to save it to your Google Drive. Okay, so here's a Gale Interactive Science. So we're going to go ahead and type in a plant cell. It's already there. Okay, so you get your plant cell here. And it's really cool is it's not just biology either. You can look up chemistry models and you can look up other models. So it's really, really cool that you can look up these plant models and you can actually play with them and move things like I move the nucleus and open it up. I can move the cell wall here. Look at that. And it comes apart and you can twist it around. And then it gives you a nice description. You can again save it to your Google Drive. You can listen to it out loud. So this would be great for a science assignment if you're having trouble really visualizing what the parts of the cells are things like that it's a very very cool little tool that we have for you all right okay so let's go back to our website Okay, so the last database that we have is the Britannica Middle School Library. So you would just click this one, it opens up. This one I really like, it's very simple. So it's not as confusing maybe as Gale. So if I wanna type in apple, I'm gonna get apple. So I've got apple, fruit and tree right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that one. And then underneath you saw, briefly, it said Steve Jobs because it talks about the Apple company too. But we don't want that one. We're looking at the fruit. So if you're looking at this, you can see all the little videos. It's kind of short. We can print the article here. We can cite it. We can listen to it. We can translate it. So just like 
uh, Gail, there's a lot of things that we can do here as well. Um, I like that you can change the reading level. If this reading level two is too easy, you can go up to the harder one. You can go down to the easier one. It's really, really nice that you're able to um, change the reading level so that it's accessible to wherever you might be with your reading and so that you can understand it and use the information. Okay, so I'm going to go back here to our research databases. I also have up here at the research tab an MLA format tab. So if you click that, it'll show you how to open a Google document that already has an MLA format done for you. I also have a user guide here if you're interested in, in that. And it talks about the citation style and gives some examples down here in a little video about it. But this is what we use at the middle school is MLA format but there are lots of different formatting styles, which you'll learn about probably another time. All right, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. And if you have any questions, as always, you can come to the library and talk to me, Mrs. Reynoso, your teacher librarian, or you can also email me. Have a great day. Thank you. This video will be a guide for students to navigate the world of copyright and plagiarism and the resources that the Loma Vista Library offers. It's really important for students as well as educators to understand copyright infringement and plagiarism. Be ethical and be informed. Okay, so first we're going to talk about copyright. Copyright refers to the legal right of the owner of the intellectual property they created. Copyright protects original works such as books, music, art, movies, and much more. Copyright is work that is protected against other people that may want to make a profit on it. Copyright infringement means that someone has used someone else's work that is covered under copyright law. This would include using work without permission from the copyright holder, who is the original owner of the work. Copyright infringement for some may seem harmless, but it has many negative consequences. Copyright infringement harms the creators, artists, musicians, writers, and other creators that invested their time, effort, and creativity into their work. Copyright protection grants them rights over their intellectual property and allows them to earn a living from their creative work. For example, we're going to pretend that this image from Minimal Beauty Organic Skincare is a copyrighted image. If I wanted to create my own skincare brand and I wanted to use the same exact logo, I would be infringing on copyright. I would be breaking the law and profiting off this company's branding. The company would have the right to pursue legal action against me. If you have any questions about copyright, please ask me, Mrs. Reynoso, your librarian. Also, there are a lot of free kid-friendly online resources that explain copyright. Okay, so now on to plagiarism. Plagiarism is the act of presenting someone else's work, ideas, or words as your own without giving any credit or acknowledgement to the creator. In students' terms, we usually just call this cheating, but it often goes beyond that. Copying is a form of plagiarism. Some students will just copy work word for word and pass it off as their own. This is a basic level of plagiarism. Some people will often just copy and paste directly from another source, especially online, though that may seem like an easy choice when needing to complete work. It has consequences. Citations are so important. There also may be times when you are writing a paper and need to use the ideas of others to support your ideas. Citations combat plagiarism by giving the original author credit for their ideas. For example, imagine you came up with a great fun game to play with your friends and were inspired by another friend's game. If you wanted to share your idea with someone else, it would be important to give your friend credit. That's what a citation is. So when you are completing a school project or essay and you use someone else's ideas, you need to give credit for those ideas by citing the original creator. Resources for plagiarism. 
If you have any questions about plagiarism, please ask me, your librarian. You can also ask your teacher. Also, there are a lot of online sources that explain plagiarism, as well as great resources for teaching citations and citation machines that create them. However, it's best to always double check your citations with the citation machines just to be sure that they are correct. I recommend Owl Purdue. I love their website. In summary, copyright infringement relates to using someone else's creative work without permission to do so. Plagiarism involves presenting someone else's work or ideas as your own. Both are extremely unethical and can have legal consequences. Remember that it is always important to respect the rights of creators and provide proper credit when using or referencing their work. As always, if you have any questions, please see me, Mrs. Reynoso, in the library. students, it's Mrs. Reynoso again. So after watching that entire orientation, if you have some questions that are unanswered, you can always email me. There's my email right here on the screen. You can always come visit me in the library at any time. I'm here until 315 every day, if not after school, because I am here a lot of times after school. You can come ask me any questions about anything that you need. If you need help finding information, that is my job. I'm here to help you with all your information services and research and anything of that nature or finding a good book of course um, you can call the loma library right there there's our phone number as well and if you need any help with it for your computer your chromebook that number is for the help desk and they are available until 5 p.m monday through friday so from 9 a.m to 5 p.m if you need any help with that um, but we are always here to help you out and we hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you real soon in the library.